It was like Joe Lewis being banned from the ring. In 1942, horse racing fans were faced with the unthinkable, the suspension of the sport's top jockey. The irascible Eddie Arcaro was banished to the stands following an on-track altercation. Owners and fans, desperate for Arcaro's return, pressured the racing commission to reinstate the star jockey. You have to look back in, in that era and look at uh, the national mindset and look at what was popular, what were the major sports in that day. If you take a, took a look at the New York Times from the era when Eddie Arcaro was suspended, and you would have found, I think, that the major sports in this nation were baseball, horse racing, and boxing. Those were the marquee sports, and Eddie Arcaro, as one of the major stars of thoroughbred racing, I think for the people who love this sport, and there were tens of thousands of packed racetracks every weekend in, in those days, you know, across the country, it was, uh, it was very important that he be a part of the picture. Finally, after a year out of the saddle, Arcaro was allowed to return to the track. He slipped into his silks and soon worked his way back to the head of the pack. By 1943, he was winning races again. And in 1945, he won his third Kentucky Derby. Eddie was so competitive and really a master strategist. And uh, he ruled racing during the decades that he rode because he was smart, he was cagey and unafraid, and terribly competitive. He had a clock in his head. He knew exactly how fast he was going. He, could, he had the ability to look over and see other horses running and could evaluate what they were doing. And he. He could ride five or six horses in the same race, believe it or not. He knew what he was doing. Only the very best horses were good enough for Arcaro. At the Kentucky Derby in 1948, he planned to mount a Calumet Colt named Colt Town. The unbeaten three-year-old was an odds-on favorite. Ben and Jimmy Jones had raised and trained Colt Town. But they didn't think Colt Town was their best horse. Jimmy Jones convinced Arcaro to ride Cold Town's stable mate instead, a colt named Citation. I think it's likely that Citation maybe did not get quite the credit he deserved because he was a workmanlike, efficient horse. He didn't have the flashy chestnut color that Man of War had, but uh, he was an absolute uh, marvel. Arcaro wasn't sure what to expect when he trotted Citation into the starting gate of the 1948 Derby. But when the race started, Arcaro found himself in a familiar place, out front. Not only did Citation win the Derby, he also set a track record at the Preakness. With the Triple Crown on the line, Citation arrived at Belmont Park for the 1948 Belmont Stakes. Everyone figured the sensation from Calumet Farm was a sure bet. I said, I don't know how you can get beat in here unless you fall off. I just kidding him. I said, don't fall off. Uh, and they went to the gate, went in and got in the gate, and by God, the horse stumbled at the, gate, at the break. The ground all broke out from under him, and he went down on his nose, and Eddie was uh, hanging on the side and hanging all over him. And by that time, the horses got way down there. Despite being nearly thrown from the horse, an undaunted Arcaro recovered and rode Citation to victory. It was Arcaro's and Calumet's second Triple Crown. He was laughing at the finish. Uh, beat, beat him so easy. If he hadn't been a good, agile kind of a guy, why, he probably would have fallen completely off the horse. Of course, Citation did his part, too. He was a gifted steed, not a showboat, just a raw, solid talent in motion. The description of uh, Citation was that he was a well-oiled machine, whereas Man of War was likened to a, a living flame. And it would be perhaps similar to Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. One just had a flair that the other didn't. He was completely focused, and he, um, he was all business. And um, I happened to be lucky enough to get to know Eddie Arcaro, who wrote him most of his career. And he, uh, he told me that he's as good a horse as he ever rode, and that's really saying something, because Eddie rode all the best. 
So feared was the team of Arcaro and Citation that they ran the 1948 Pimlico Special unopposed. Pimlico Special. By that time, Citation was so feared that no other horse was entered against him. He became the second horse... With Citation's tremendous season, Warren Wright and Calumet stood firmly atop the racing world. Wright was the undisputed king of the sport of kings. But he had one more goal in mind. Since the beginning of the sport, no horse had won a million dollars on the track. Wright was certain that Citation had what it took to become that horse. But in 1949, the year following his Triple Crown triumph, a tendon injury threatened to put Citation out to pasture for good. Wright hired a team of specialists who worked to rush Citation's rehab. Citation returned to racing in 1950, but shortly after his return, Wright suffered heart failure. Citation did go on to break the million dollar mark, but the notoriously driven owner of Calumet Farm did not live to see it. 50,000 fans roar a mighty salute as the first thoroughbred millionaire of all time receives his floral tribute in the winner's circle. Following Wright's death, Calumet struggled to maintain the same level of success. At the dawn of the 1960s, it looked as though the sun was setting on Calumet Farm. In 1961, legendary trainer Ben Jones passed away. Three years later, his son Jimmy called it quits. They weren't putting any money into it. Mares get older and horses get older and you gotta replace them. And, uh, and uh, I just finally could see it was a going as a downhill proposition for us, we going downhill. It's unlikely that any farm will ever dominate the sport like Calumet did. Warren Wright's Thoroughbreds captured the money title seven out of 10 years, won four Kentucky Derbies, two Triple Crowns, and had the Horse of the Year six times. Calumet was absolutely able to come in and, and dominate the sport for for two de decades, almost completely, and really over five decades, uh, to a very large extent. I call it the dynasty. We had a thing called the Calumet family, and Mr. Wright was the head of it. We would refer among us to him as father, and we felt like he was the head of our family. Calumet built, built up this huge fortress in racing, uh, and, and a large, uh, resting largely, I think, on the brilliant, astute business uh, judgments of Wright and his ability to be comfortable with, but also to uh, irritate and inspire and get things out of great talent. Not only did racing bid farewell to Warren Wright and the trainers who worked behind the scenes for Calumet, the sport also said goodbye to its rebellious frontman, jockey Eddie Arcaro. At age 46, Arcaro announced his retirement, telling reporters that betters deserve the best and I'm getting good horses beat. Eddie, uh, he had the uh, goodwill of most of everybody in racing. They all recognized him as a, as a great rider and they called him the master and, uh, and he was the best. Eddie Arcaro was the greatest jockey of the 20th century. I mean, if you just look at the numbers alone, he won two triple crowns on Whirl Away and Citation. He won five Kentucky Derbies, six Belmonts, four Travers, four Hopefuls for two-year-olds. Uh, and uh, when he retired in 1962, he had won more than 4,700 races. And an extraordinary career just by the, the numbers. The retirement of Eddie Arcaro marked the end of more than Calumet's domination of the sport. 